Hey guys, back with another video. And I'm super excited for this because I've had an idea of this for a while. But I've, I haven't thought of the nation to do this. I think, I've, I've been thinking of a few other nations, but I've thought of one nation. That's on the downfall lately, but at one point it was super high. And that nation is Iceland. Iceland, it's a small nation in the northern part of Europe, it's near, like, Great Britain and Greenland. Iceland's, like, right over here. And it's a small country, but people have been there for a very long time. The Vikings were there, obviously, and it has a lot of Viking, like, and, uh, and, des like, and industrial, like, stuff. But, whatever. But the national team, it's never, it's never been that, um that um like that big and because it only it only it, it hasn't been a, a national team for a long a long time and they haven't even really been a country for a long time but today i'm going to be going through the rise of the iceland of the iceland national team because they've gone from a small nation which is like a like 366,000 people to knocking out England near 2016. It's absolutely crazy what they've done. So let's get into Iceland as a nation. Iceland is a Nordic, a Nordic Ice, Iceland island nation. Um, they ha It's a very small, their capital is Reykjavik, Reykjavik. And that's where most people are already set the population. It's 366,000 from 2020. Um, and it's not like, it, it's a pretty popular place to go to for some people, because, um, I, they have a few hot springs there, um, but they have volcanoes, geysers, and lava fields. Sometimes people actually go in some of these stuff. But yeah, um, Iceland, it's only become, like, a popular nation to go to, maybe since the early, like, to, uh, like, since the early, like, maybe 2010s, since the early, since, like, to the early 2000s because like a lot of, not a lot of people don't think knew about Iceland like they because I, I, it, it's like such a remote island like but they've been able to do stuff now we're gonna get to the national team part the Iceland the Iceland national team um they they became a FIFA member in 1947 um and have been a UEFA member since 1957. Um, and, like, the only time they, they really started doing well was in the 2010s. Before that, like, they had not big success. Like, they, like, never really were really getting into that. But like, the Euro 2016 was their first ever major competition. And as we all know, that time would be really good. But now let's go back to start, to the beginning. So yeah, the 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 Icelandic Football League was founded in 1912, um, and the first uh, the first international match was in was July 29th uh, in 1930 against Faroe Islands. Um, the Iceland would come to win that game one nil, um, but both both Iceland and Faroe Islands were unofficial unaffiliated with FIFA. Um, and their first officially recognized match by FIFA took place in Reykjavik on July 17th of 1946 in a 3-0 loss to Denmark. So yeah, not not a good result. Well, it is their first match by FIFA. So Denmark, they're also like but still, you got like it's their first match ever with FIFA, but the, and they and they lost 3-0. Um our first international victory being represented by FIFA was against Finland in 1947. Uh, for the first 20 years of the Football Association of Iceland's existence, the team mostly did not participate in the World Cup or the European Championship. In 1954, when I say that, actually, like, I mean, like, they never were in qualifying. They, like, it was only until 1954 when Iceland applied to take part in qualification for the 1954 World Cup.
So before then, they weren't in like any qualifying. But 1954 was the first year they they got to qualifying uh, for the 1954 World Cup. But the application was rejected, so they actually didn't count. In, in qualification for 1958 World Cup, though, Iceland finished last in their group with zero wins, conceding 28 goals. 26, my bad. So yeah, not great. Uh, and then in 1980, so like this is a lot, this is a while after, I still won their first edition of the friendly tournament known as the Greenland Cup. So, it, mm, but yeah, sure. And since 1974, the team has taken part in, in qualifying for every World Cup and European Championship since 1974. In 1994, the team reached their best ever position in the FIFA World Rankings in 37th. This record, uh, this record stood until. 2016, when they managed to reach 21st, so that was a big, and a friendly against Estonia on, uh, 24th of April, 1996, um, an, um, a soccer player called, um, or a, a former Iceland soccer player called Eor Smari Guhajnsson, that has a substitute for his father, Arnor. So yeah, this marked for the first time that a father and son play in the same international match. International match. So that was fun. Now going to the 21st century. In qualification for Euro 2004, Iceland finished in their group one point behind Scotland. Finished third. So they almost made it. But they finished third just one point behind Scotland. They did not qualify for the playoff spot, but they were so close. And they and this is when they started picking up the pace. Because in, in the 1900s, they... They never really made it high into the World Cup. In 20, starting to the 2010s, though, that's when they really started to pick up the pace. That's when some maybe some young players like Gilfie Sigurdsson were coming up. Maybe Hal Dorsen, like maybe like in the U20s, like like in the late two, um, 2000s, like in 2008. You got some young players coming in who are now representing like. Sigurdsson, we don't talk about him, but Haldorsson and Gunnarsson, like, those, th this is, th the golden age of kind of, kind of Scotland started in the late tw t uh, two, t uh, 2000s, maybe like 2009, so yeah, like, that's kind of where they started, like, the golden age, and that's where the team is now, well, the team is now, it's not doing that great currently, um, uh, in 2014, Iceland almost secured qualification for their first World Cup, but they couldn't. They finished second in Group D, they, um, so that did get the playoffs, but they played Croatia in a two-leg qualification. After holding them to a nil-nil draw, they, in the, in the, in the home leg, they lost 2 nil away, so they couldn't get wor World Cup qualification. Um, that year, Iceland qualified. For, a, for this was the, this was the first time though, ever that they were qualif that that they would qualify for a major tournament. That was in 2015, after they finished second in Group A, qual qualifying for Euro 2016. So this is the first time in like 80 years. Um, well, if it's 2016, if it's if they're qualifying 2016 and they join 19 like 47 or 57. Uh. Yeah. This would be the first time ever in like 70 or 80 years that they would, I think it's 70, yeah, 70 years, that they would be getting, I think it's actually, and whatever, but that, that they would be getting um, a big major tournament. And this this was an absolute insane moment, uh, obviously for us Icelandic people, maybe like 200,000 people there, maybe a bit over, but like, you have... The amount, like the to the fact that they're qualifying for Euros with that little people, and their shows like this team is a force to be reckoned with. After they did qualify for Euro 2016, losing only two games and beating the Netherlands, who didn't actually make it to the Euros, Iceland beating the Netherlands like that is insane, and they didn't even and 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 who finished third? They beat Netherlands. To finish second. And Netherlands in 2014 World Cup finished third. Twice. So like crazy. During qualification they reached their highest ranking in the FIFA World Rankings. And I think that's still today to this day. I'm not sure. 
23rd. And then in Euro 2016, this was the first ever major competition that, that they would host. And, and they were they were put, put off a pretty hard group. They, were first, they had Portugal, who were the favorites of the group. Hungary, who were pretty good. And Austria. So it's a pretty hard group. But even if, even with these hard teams, they will still come out in, on top. At the tournament, at, in the tournament, I some record 1-1 draws in their first two group stage games against Portugal and Hungary. So, which was really good. And then they were able to get a 2-1 victory over Austria. Like, and then they, I think they finished top of their group. And then Portugal finished third. Like, everyone thought that they were finished first. Iceland qualified for the tournament, um, um, qualified for the knockout rounds. This is where it got big, big. Round of 16. The, the biggest moment I think I can find ever. Knocking out England in the round of 16 in the Euro, in the Euro, in the Euros. This, an England team that has the potential to be like the best team in the world, but you gotta remember this was 2016. Like the, they had Roy Hutchinson wasn't great, and they had a team that was okay. Uh, but England losing to Iceland two one was an absolute insane. I remember watching that game. I I actually did watch that game. I remember watching it, and I couldn't believe that Iceland were ahead of England. And that's and, and I'm being dead serious when I say that I was that I saw that game. I didn't watch the whole game, but I did see that. And they managed to beat England 2-1. And to quote Alan Shearer, who said this, this is the biggest upset since... Uh, or I, He said that this is a, an absolute disgrace. That's what Alan Shearer said from right after the game. But to quote England people, this is the biggest upset since the 1950. World Cup losing to USA. The biggest upset losing to Iceland since Euro uh, since the World Cup in 1950 losing to USA. You can just imagine how big of a moment this is. Losing to Iceland. For England that was crazy. Like that was a disgrace for the country. For Iceland it was like it was like the the heavens have appeared because they've just beaten England. They've beaten England. And you can just tell that this is the big moment. Because the team's never been in a major competition. And they're out here going to the round of 16, topping their heroes group, and beating England. So, crazy moment. And then, though, in, unfortunately, it's the quarterfinals. They, they couldn't win. Again, they were up against the host of the entire tournament. They were up against France. So, yeah. Much as they, they were able to win against England, when you're at, when, when you're at, you're a small country at the, 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 the team's home crowd. It's very unlikely and they unfortunately lost to France, who were the hosts of the tournament. 5-2. Still winning. Two goals against a France team that was very good. It's still incredible. They lost five two, but still, France were the host, and Iceland had never even participated. They had no experience in this tournament, and they were still able to get two goals out of a France side that was hosting. That was still very good. So, credit to Iceland made it to the quarterfinals in their first ever major competition. It's an absolutely insane thing. But yeah, they, they were knocked out Euro 2016, the quarterfinals, amazing one, and more success came as they qualified for Euro to, for the World Cup in 2018. This was the last, this, this tournament is kind of where the downfall started, but again, qualifying for their first ever World Cup is still insane. So they qualified for, 20, for the 2018 World Cup. Their first ever appearance in the World Championship, securing qualification on October 9, 2017 after a 2-0 win against Kosovo. In doing so, they became the lowest popular country ever to reach the finals. And that's actually crazy. crazy. 
in in the World Cup though they had a pretty hard group. Iceland had to draw against Croatia, Argentina, and Nigeria. And just to say, this was people said that this was the group of death. It, it, it's so annoying that they had to be put in the group of death because if they actually had a chance, then they could have made made it through, maybe made it through. But they had Croatia, who gone to the final. Argentina, who had Messi and some really good players, and Nigeria, who still were really good. Still won the, maybe top two, the best teams in Africa. So they just got really unlucky with their group draw. Spy challenging group, I saw a tip to advance from the group by some people, but then, no, it didn't work. But just saying, they weren't able to make their first game ever in the World Cup. They were able to tie against the runners-up Argentina. Like, and Hal, Hal Dorson, their goalkeeper, who was like 34, 33, he saved the penalty from Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi, he saved the penalty from them. Iceland have shocked, shocked everyone. A 1-1 draw against Argentina. The runners-up of the 2014 World Cup. And saving a penalty from Lionel Messi. I also watched that game. I remember watching that game. So I gotta admit, that was absolutely insane. So Ice in their first ever World Cup match got a 1 1 draw against Argentina. Crazy match. The rest of the games, though, weren't really that good. Next game, 2 0 loss to Nigeria. That wasn't that great. And then they lost to Croatia in the final group game. They did get a goal uh, from Sigurdsson on a penalty, but I think they lost 2-1, if I'm right. So, yeah, knocked out the World Cup. I think they finished bottom with just one point. And, yeah, Nigeria also got knocked out. Tw World Cup 2018, knocked out. So, yeah, but they still were able to get a point, and they still showed that they can do it, like, at some, um, at some points. But they... Gotta give credit to them for even making it to the World Cup and saving a penalty from Lionel Messi. So crazy. Now we're gonna go into 2020. In 2020, Iceland came very close to qualifying for Euro 2020. Their playoff game against Hungary. Iceland led for um, led 1-0 for nearly the entire match until Hungary scored two goals in under five minutes of the game left. The first coming in the 80th minute to stun Iceland and the second in the second minute of adding time for it to be the winner, Hungary had beaten Iceland 2-1. Yeah, Iceland had also suffered poor results in Nations League, which was also not great. In the campaign, in the when they were in League A, having lost all their group matches and failing to garner a, a single point, resulting in their relegation to, to League B the following season. Manager Eric Hamren. I think that's his name, Hamran. Yeah, Eric Hamran. Um, he resigned following their poor performance from the year. But yeah, still, it's, it's, it's still like a, it's a great performance. He coached actually them from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty. But yeah, he resigned. But yeah, and that's like until twenty twenty. Um, now they they haven't been on good success. I think in their qualifying. They haven't been that great. So, yeah, it's just a shame. Because they, they were really good at one point. But they were just, they couldn't fail. And now I'm going to be looking at, like, some of their results. Yeah. Trying to qualify for World, World Cup 2022. It wasn't great. They finished fifth. With just nine points. They, they, they lost. They finished fifth behind Germany. Finished top with 27 points. North Macedonia finished second with 18 points. Romania finished third with 17. And Armenia, who finished fourth with 12. The only team that finished behind them was Liechtenstein. So, not great. And actually, just recently, they've been playing a few friendlies. And they lost 5 1 to South Korea in their latest match. Literally, only like five days, six days, six days ago. 5 1. I know it's a friendly, but losing 5 1 to South Korea, I think they were also at home. And then they also tied to Uganda and also a friendly 1-1. But yeah, they like in the in the World Cup qualifiers, they lost against North Macedonia. Then they then before that they tied 0-0 against Romania. 
they won, they won against Liechtenstein, but like, it, it just, like, on the, right now, they're going on a downward spiral because all their good players are not doing so good right now. It's because all their good players right now are pretty old. Like, they're all, they're all past their prime, at least the good players. But they got some upcoming friendlies. They got friendly against Finland and Spain on March 26th, March 29th. And they got some Nations League groups um, against Israel, Albania, Russia, Israel, Russia, and Albania this uh, this summer. And, like, June and September. But, yeah. Like, I just gotta say, anybody who's watching this, you gotta remember. How small Iceland is, how the how big the population is, they've coped brilliantly. Because they've gone from being like such a small nation to being into the World Cup and knocking out England in the Euros. So, gotta give it to them and also gotta give it to the players. Some players like uh, Hans, Hans Haldersson, 37 years old, he's actually not for club right now. But he's still, he, he was really good, saving a penalty from Lionel Messi. That's got to be really hard. Gilfie Sigurdsson. I don't know what's going on with him. Never mind. But he's also been great. Like, and just all the players give a shout out. Because the way that they've been doing this national team has been amazing. I'm hoping that they can get back to good results. Because they haven't been that great right now. But just remember. Just remember. How, how lucky we are to have Iceland. And to be able... To see Iceland play and me going through all this, all the success that they have been. I hope you guys like this video, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to be doing this maybe with some other nations. I hope you guys like this video, and I hope you guys like learning the history about Iceland, the Iceland national team. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.